Holy smokes, that was one of the coolest places we've ever been. They're, they're really good sailors. They're really oh, totally. awesome at what they do. This is gonna be a sailing canoe, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna look like that one over there. They're pretty um, resourceful, yeah. I think is the word. <laughs> they take these sailing canoes, these sailows, and they use them to sail to mainland Papua New Guinea, which is about two to three days away. Their sails are actually very often just made out of blue tarps, like yeah. your garden variety tarp. This is uh, the South Pacific, I guess we always imagine. They sail really, really far. You guys are ingenious. Look at that. So Martin, what's what's this? How do you make this? Is it metal? Tin. 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 So you make holes in the tin and then you wrap it around a stick. <laughs> Very smart. Yeah, yeah. They go straight over the reefs. They they don't have a they don't have a dagger board. They're an outrigger, so it's just like the one dugout, which has a bit of a V to it. So it yep. is it is pointy at the bottom, and then um, it has the outrigger, uh, which is another tree. They make a hole through the side with like a homemade rasp. And then um, they put the stick through and then they attach the outrigger to that stick. Yeah. Is there heavier wood on the bottom? Or just no. one piece? No. Just one piece of wood. Here. Okay. Sometimes they'll have a family member that goes off to work and so they're a richer family and they'll have uh, a power boat, like a, a panga, like a banana boat, they call them there. The gas in those is very expensive in Papua New Guinea. So with these sailing canoes, they can go for free for miles and then they just stop and they'll sleep on an island so there's all you pull up to an island and there's little fishing camps or little camps on them everywhere and like little huts that are still in use and they use them when they're doing these huge journeys uh, around their trading route or into the mainland to get sort of big time supplies. How long does it take to make a canoe like this? One month. How many families own this canoe? Like how many people can use it? Anyone can. A yeah, whole island yep. community yep. uses it? Okay. So one of the things that happened when we were there is they offered us to take us on one of these sailors. We thought, well, that's cool, but how can we give back? So we came up with a few ways. First, we had an old Code Zero, one of our sails. This is an old... Um, it's all we have left of it. Uh, light sail. Yeah. But it's, it's, I think it's better than a tarp. Better than the blue tarp. Yeah. It's not so big. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, half a sail. Half a sail. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They usually have holes in them and they're stitched together with like needle and thread, like hand thread. They don't have sewing machines, they don't have electricity. It's outrageous how fast they go on these things and how far. These are their traditional sailing canoes here in Papua New Guinea in Louise 8. Saila. Saila? Saila, it's sailing canoe. Okay. In our language, Saila. And they're, they're everywhere. There's so many of them. There's small ones, big ones, giant ones, uh, little tiny baby ones that sail around the lagoons. They're some of the coolest sailing canoes we've ever seen. Actually, they're the best sailing canoes we've ever seen. We haven't seen that many sailing canoes. So this is pretty cool. We're gonna go sailing with Ruben. Are we gonna be okay, Ruben? Yes. We're not gonna sink the boat? No, we're not going to sink. We're not, will I tip it over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I gotta be careful not to tip it over. No, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> no, no, this is a wood. Yeah. Yeah, if you sink, you don't, you will not go into the wet sea. Okay. You will sink up. <laughs> yeah. And they're crazy fast. They're so good at what they do. Holy crap, those things take off. How old is this one? Now we just take it on this year. This year? Uh, okay. For so a season of beach demo for our diving. For the beach demo. Yeah. 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 So, so you took this out diving with yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. From Panapompo. Wow. Okay. But all the trees still come from this one island called Panietti. And all the main builders are either in Panapom Pom or Panietti. And so your canoes either come from the builders in one island or the other. And they made it in Panapom Pom yeah. and you yeah. purchased it they from them. It. Yeah. yeah. What is with the uh, one pig and money? 500 kina. 500 kina, kina yeah. and one pig. Yeah. My gosh, eh? And this boat here, it's yeah. 4,000. 
4,000. One inch peanut. Okay, one inch yeah. peanut. And they're different a little bit because this one has the log that goes at one one panel up quite a bit higher. Yeah. When you look at them, they have different types or shapes. I'm talking about these. Oh, the carvings. Yeah. yeah. But made by the same guy? No, different. Different. Yeah, yeah. but same island. Panapon. Yeah. Okay, where can you stand and where can you not stand on this boat? Where can you sit? Where can you not sit? Is there certain areas you can't sit on that will break if you sit on them? Yeah. You know this this out trigger? Yeah. It's not free. Yeah. In our language, we call it banayola. Banayola? That's for sitting ladies. Ah. When we load ladies, ladies sit down there. We, boys and men, just walk out on this and do the job as we say lava. Okay. But ladies and girls sit down here with the babies. Yeah. yeah and put the stuffs inside here. Okay. Mm. So we actually got to go sailing out on the baby and they asked us which one do you want to go on and I said I want to go out on the small fast one, of course. Oh, yeah. And plus it was, I think it was a bit easier. But then they looked at Ben and they're like, hmm, big guy, <laughs> like big fat white guy getting on this little tiny canoe. They are so kind of like, um, not in a bad way, but they're so freaking rickety when you get on them. It's like everything moves. Like it's Well, all the actual outrigger is attached with little pieces of string. Like well, rope. Rope. Yeah, yeah. string, rope, line, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, everything kind of flexes, but it works, man. Like it totally works. Yeah. You get on? I get on. Okay. Here. Yeah. Okay, okay. down there. Okay, okay, we're back here or we'll up there? Sit down there. Up there. Yeah. On the other side. Okay. Face to face with Joe. Like this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss land goodbye. Yeah, we're out of here. So we're off, we're heading out, and uh, time for sale. Okay, how do you do this? Okay, sail up. Sail up. Sail up. Sail up. Okay. Yeah. sail down and I've got rope sewn along the foot and I've tied the foot to the, the boom I guess it's pretty simple it's awesome we're de I definitely feel like um, I'm big for this canoe <laughs> the people here are quite a bit smaller than us usually so we're, we're fat <laughs> the one side of the canoe the windward side is always the windward side and that's the side with the outrigger so when they're going upwind and they want to tack, go the other direction, they can't because the outrigger would be on the leeward side. So what they do is... They take the whole boom, flip it like up and over and around to the other side. Yeah. It's outrageous. <laughs> so it's a completely different way of sailing. This is so beautiful. It's good. The guy holds the paddle at the top and then he uses his foot to uh, steer the bottom of it. So it's this constant like pull or push with his foot. Oh. But one foot's in the water and then he uses leverage to pull or push. Yeah, they're, it's the rudder. And you see these sail outs all throughout the Lusiades and they're like miles and miles and miles offshore and they're going along and you're thinking, what's that like speck on the horizon? And it's, Sure enough, a sail out. Yeah. And sometimes they have like, seems like the whole village on the sail out going along. Well, it'll be in a whole family. Yeah. And then all their goods, like they've gone shopping in the mainland, so a whole bunch of them get together, go shopping on the mainland for whatever they need. 
and then they come back and the boat's like loaded. People, tons of stuff. I'll chew and beat on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, woo! <laughs> having a good time. Yeah. They're loving to see that a sailboat and we're loving to see them go by. Yeah. And it's just, it's so cool. Sometimes when we're out here sailing and exploring and going into these villages, taking you along for the ride changes things because we have to explain to the camera of what's actually going on. And at first it was a little awkward because people would look at the camera and think, what the hell is that guy doing? Like, who does he think he is? But we explained to them that we make videos. I think it's changed our perspective or our experience as we venture through these cultures. By the way, I totally agree. That's all. It's it has absolutely changed our experiences. I think mostly because we get to share it, and the res it's like we get to live the moment twice. So how cool is it that I get to go and have this crazy experience that you reflect upon it in the moment, but then a, a month or so later, I get to watch a video about it. And you're right. It is different with the camera, and it, it's not just just different with the camera because the camera doesn't necessarily change our experience in the moment. No, but it puts a different lens on what you're seeing, right? You're trying to see it through how you guys would see it. And for some reason that changes things. And I don't know why that is, but it's for the better. Wouldn't you say? I think so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, I think so. Um, it's just so much fun to get out and do these things. And they're so accommodating. Like, like they knew the, all the reef passes they knew. Oh, yeah. They knew where we could go. They knew how deep it was everywhere. They were so in tune with their areas. And it was yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. And the currents there were fierce. It was some of the fiercest currents I've seen yeah. in a long time. Yeah. And we were going by the sail out and this poor freaking boat was going, whoa! And I was like, I thought our boat was heaving and hoeing. And here this guy is like, just and they're, they're constantly bailing, bailing out water. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. And it makes you realize how sturdy and robust our boats are and how we still get in this mindset of, oh, who knows if this boat will make it, you know, I don't know. And this is not to compare, you know, our kind of boat with their kind of sailing canoe for sailing around the world, but it is to show that you can go sail on anything and it basically just comes down to comfort level i would say yeah i'd say we're slightly more comfortable very much more comfortable than in a sail out it was such a fun adventure thanks for coming along for the ride it's such a kick taking you guys along for this ride ben spent the day going like a million miles to the other island in the dinghy to get top internet i literally took the dinghy for like an hour long ride down to this other island to get a Digicel SIM card. Got the SIM card, but it doesn't have like any data <laughs> on it. Like they call it top up here, which means I can't add data to it. So I'm basically stuck at no internet. So no videos. Sorry. <laughs> Papua New Guinea, man. What do you expect? Yeah. And no Digicel over here at no. uh, Sudas. No, 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 no. No, okay. Okay. Okay, today we go to Kimucha. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, we hey? have to go upwind on internet. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs>